The Great Split. This is a game based on the I Cut You Choose mechanic. In the game, allegedly, we are a group of collectors. We got together and we start exchanging uh, works of art, tomes, gems, and other valuable stuff, and also seals and certificates of authenticity. But do we? No, we don't really do any of that. The game, in essence, is purely abstract. I mean, you're gonna see art, but it's just uh, that represents those things, but there is no real connection between the theme and and the mechanics, and maybe that's still okay. Not every game has to be as, as detailed and thematic as, as a war game, for example. Now, the game will last a number of turns, and you have this board that goes in the middle of the table that has the turn track. Uh, at the end of each turn, we move this marker there. This central board also reminds us of the deck from which we're gonna draw our cards that will implement and supplement our hands. There's a token, see we place these tokens randomly face down at the beginning of the game and we don't use all of them. And at the end of each turn we reveal one and they have different numbers, that one is a one for example. We use that to move this slider by the corresponding number of steps and suppose at the end of turn two and we got two more steps and so we are to level three. What that is used for is the value of artworks will change during the game and so for example if we were to score artworks right now if I have a value of three on my personal board I will be scoring ten points. If I have a value of zero to one I will be scoring six 4 to 6, 13, and 7 and up will be 15. That's one of the things that the turn track does, altering the value of artwork, so that will increase over time. Also, between at the end of turn 3 and at the end of turn 4, we're going to score different things. These tokens also are placed randomly uh, at the beginning of the game, so that the order in which we score things also, in one round, we're going to score one thing, artworks, for example, and in the other round, two things, so tomes and gems here. The order also will be random. So we're going to have some scoring here, and then we play until the end of the game, where we're going to have more scoring. And the uh, at the end of that, the person with the highest score wins the game. So we're also going to have a personal board. That we're going to use to keep track of the values in the different categories that we are collecting. Everything production wise looks really neat as you can see from these boards that have this you know like art deco uh, style, very elegant, very simple and yet beautiful. <clears throat> Also, these tracks are engraved so that these wooden cubes will not uh, hopefully move around too much. And our job is to move these cubes on these tracks as much as possible to score different things. And the different tracks will score differently. So, for example, moving on the tomes, so the value <coughs> moving up on the tomes track, the value that they score is the highest number that my cube is sitting on or that it passed and so that would be six points for example. Artworks as we said depends on the change in value <clears throat> of the artwork track. Gems, uh, whichever kind you have uh, you want the other one more. You want the oh I, I, I put the wrong cube there that shouldn't be brown that should be light blue. Well, again, you have two kinds of gems in the game and <clears throat> you're caught in an endless spiral of desire because whichever you have the most, you want the other one even more. Meaning when we score, your score will be based on the value of the, of the gem track on which you are, in which you are behind. Gold uh, will give you these nice double arrows here that uh, will count as, as wild uh, track advancement. So, if I cover that spot there with those two yellow arrows, I can get, uh, I can advance by two steps on any other track or combination of tracks. Other tracks, you cannot use gold to create more gold. And then we have the seals. Uh, think of them as certificates of authenticity. Somehow they multiply the value of the other things. And so, for example, if we have 
see there is a track with terms and so when we're gonna score the certificates you see the number of little stars there that's multiplied by the number of symbols on the corresponding track that I covered or passed so for example when we're scoring the tome certificates so then I have two symbols the tome certificate is a two so each tome symbol will be worth two points so I have a total of four points there and that's how these multipliers work because as you can see they have the same symbols as the goods that were on top of the track so at the end of the game when we score that we're gonna multiply that for example the blue gem well, the number of symbols that I covered or passed times the number of stars corresponding to that. And that's also when gold is going to work exactly the same. So that's, uh, that's the idea. Oh, also these certificate tracks will allow you when you cover that symbol with the little tiny arrow will allow you to advance to the corresponding track, getting extra tomes, getting extra artworks and so on and so forth. And around your personal display, of course, you have your, your scoring track to keep track of how many points you score. So that's what you're trying to do to advance on those tracks in a way that will generate points uh, during the uh, scoring phases in turn three, turn four, and the mega scoring phase at the end of the game. How do we do that? Remember that I said I cut, you choose. Each player has a wallet such as this one, which has a card that looks just like it. And then you will have your hand of cards and each turn you'll get some new cards in it. And these cards simply have symbols that represent the various tracks, plus the arrow that simply means victory points. And so, for example, this symbol, if I have it in my hand at the end of the turn, that will allow me to advance by one spot on that track. Here, just victory points. This one, any one uh, certificate that has a, a, a square frame, just like so artworks and so on and so forth any certificate with the diamond square so what I'm gonna do in my hand of cards I'm gonna split it into two groups by placing the card in between like so once I do so I put it in my wallet and I'm and I'm ready all players will do the same at the same time once I'm done, I'm going to give this to the player on my right and receive a wallet from my, my friend sitting. I give this to the left and I get left. Okay, sometimes I confuse them. So I give my wallet to the player on the left and I take the wallet from the player on the right. And of course, uh, from that player, I will receive two groups of cards. I choose one and I take it and I return this to that player while I receive my wallet with only one of the two groups that I placed in it because the friend on the left uh, took one of the two groups. So now in my hand I have a hand of cards made of the two cards that were returned to me or the, the half of the hand the small hand that was returned to me and then the cards that I took from the play on the right. And then I simply implement those decisions by moving the corresponding tracks that's the idea it's just as simple as that and so you continue like this turn after turn uh splitting your hand of cards uh, into and you'll get some new cards in it splitting your hand of cards uh losing half or about half in the process, putting together what was returned to you with what you selected, advancing on the tracks. And you continue like this, turn after turn, again, until the end of the game, where when we're gonna score everything, the tomes, the artworks, the gems, and the certificates, how you score wins the game. Again, production is really nice, no complaints there. I like how the, the board looks and the cards and the wallets even, very, very nice. And yes, the game is pretty abstract. There is nothing that really feels thematic in this game, which may just be okay, but also makes game a little bit dry. Now, when it comes to gameplay itself, uh, the eye cut you choose is all that you can do is the only meaningful decisions you, the decision you're gonna make uh, and of course you're gonna choose from somebody else's hand because once you reveal your hand of cards once you realize what cards you're actually gonna use that turn 
then you're simply recording the effect of those cards. There are no other decisions that you're making. And I'm wondering, because I really wanted to do something a little bit more with those cards, meaning, and this is something that I said about another game that is based on a similar mechanic that I played recently. The game is Precognition, which again, I, I send around different cards and I receive different cards. And I just wonder, uh, the I cut, you choose mechanic, which I like in theory, somehow I don't think it is enough by itself to support... Uh, a long game, like an hour long game. Unless you had something else, I feel is the kind of mechanic that supports maybe a 20 minute filler. Because as I was playing this game, I just felt that I wanted to do more and you know, setting up this game, uh, playing the whole game, explaining the game to new people. It just takes enough time and, and just energy that I wish there was more to do. But if it was a 20 minute filler, well, we're gonna cut and choose a couple of times and, and that's perfectly fine. I feel that the mechanic is a little too thin to support a game other than a filler. And that's basically my experience that I had when I was playing this game. I hope that I have more choice. I was feeling that I wanted to do more with those cards. And I felt that since that was all that I, that I was able to do, and I was still waiting for the people to make their decisions and to update their boards, there wasn't just enough to do for a game that still may take about an hour to play. And... Of course, again, you had to set up all the decks and everything, etc, etc, etc. It feels like the game mechanically has the depth uh, and the complexity of a filler, because it relies on this one action and recording the effect, but the logistics of a bigger game. And, and so because of that, it felt like it was a little longer than I desired, a little too uh, cumbersome than, than, I th than I felt it really needed to be. So maybe one day we're gonna have the small box, small version, the Great Split Express, and then the fact that the game is abstract and you're doing the same thing uh, turn after turn and nothing else, that won't be a problem. Or there'll be an expansion in which you're actually doing, performing things, so making decisions with those cards that you receive. And then yes, and I'm trying to figure out what you're gonna give me back and uh, what I may get from you and maybe create a synergy there. I wish either the game was shorter, or there was more to do. And that ultimately is my is why I have mixed feelings about this game because I see potential, but ultimately as is, I just felt that the game felt again repetitive and longer and more complicated than it needs to be based on the amount of agency that the design gives you. And these are my thoughts about The Great Split.